The last time I had a video of this clock radio on my channel was probably close to two and a half years ago. And it actually wasn't even on my channel. The current channel you're watching this on it was on one of my older, now defunct YouTube channels. And it was a very, very low quality video. I had taken it with a, uh, one of those pocket camcorders of probably 2008 or 2009. Very low quality. So I think it's due time now to do a proper and professional, hopefully professional, video on this piece of vintage audio and timekeeping technology. Now this is the model RC-6530 FM and AM clock radio. I'm assuming from some time in the early 1980s. And something that I find particularly interesting about this radio is it keeps time and works perfectly. Almost every single one of these clock radios with a mechanical flip clock display no longer work. It's just because the mechanism wears out after countless days, hours, years of use. Keeping time, they just eventually give up the ghost and stop working. But this one got very little use of its original former life and it still works just fine. In fact, I was using this for a good year and a half until I put it away in storage because I was just so afraid of wearing out its mechanism. And of course, it wouldn't be an easy task finding replacement parts for a 30 plus year old clock radio. And this has a couple of neat features you don't see on radios these days. So what you can do using this clock radio is put on a sleep timer all the way up to 60 minutes, have it play your music or talk programming, and after your predetermined amount of time you've set it for, the music slowly fades away, goes to silence, and you can get off to sleep without worrying about leaving your radio on unattended. Now you have auto and alarm, now when you put this in auto it plays just the radio and when you play when you put it in an alarm I believe it also plays the radio along with a buzzer. Now if you go ahead and dial this into the current time which happens to be right around 5 p.m. Uh, you know and they just everybody had their sweaters on and they had I, it was phenomenal. There you are. I never realized that there that many people in it. So when you have this in alarm mode, it will play the radio as well as the buzzer. But if you don't want the radio to play alongside the buzzer, you can just turn down the volume all the way. And then when you put buzzer on, you hear only the buzzer. Now this has a very small incandescent light bulb, practically a flashlight bulb that's located right below the minute dial card and it lights up what time it currently is if it's in total darkness and you don't have any exterior lighting to illuminate this dial you can still rely on that little miniature light bulb inside and if you're still having trouble and you can't make out what time it is there's a button up here uh, appropriately named clock light and if you push that button it raises the brightness just a bit more so it makes it even easier to see and amazingly, that is the original light bulb that is still in that unit. It's never been replaced. So yet another item, yet another part of this clock radio that is still in perfect original working condition. And the only problem that this seemed to have suffered from its previous owner in its past life was some pressure and strain that was placed upon this alarm knob and caused this plastic covering to fracture in three different parts. But thankfully it didn't spread anymore. And it, again, it doesn't affect its operation anyway. And what's nice is this has not only an FM but also an AM tuner, both of which are very high quality and very high fidelity. And this also has a very loud 3-inch speaker, a mono of course, no stereo here. Turning this unit around we have a clock set dial which we use to adjust the time. It moves clockwise, you can't go backwards, so just like, uh, just like with the alarm setting you can only move one way and if you go past it you have to go around the entire dial to get to your determined time. And additionally, this does have a headphone jack, but it's mono only, so you only hear in the left channel of audio, so you would need to use a mono to stereo adapter to be able to hear it in both channels of audio. And in case this faux wood finish had anyone fooled, it's not real wood, it's plastic of course, but it's in decent condition, sands a few scratches, scuff marks, and I don't really know what spilled all over this thing, but it certainly didn't happen when this was in my possession. Unfortunately, this is missing a screw to hold down this side. There's a washer inside that that screw is supposed to fasten into, but it had gotten stripped. And in addition to becoming stripped, the little plastic holders that held it in place 
had fractured and cracked off again from the previous owner. Now it's band selector switches over on this side. It has AM and FM as well as FM auto frequency control. So if you uh, are having a bit of trouble keeping locked into a certain FM channel that's drifting, you can use AFC mode to lock it in. And then we have a tone control for bass and treble mode. When you put this in bass, it really sounds quite good and boomy without, uh, without too much loss of treble. And you can see it's been keeping time as I've been recording this video. Although, of course, the time has skipped around a bit because I've uh, been playing with the clock set dial on the side of it. But now I believe it's time for a bit of an audio test. Is it me or does it sound like that song is playing a bit faster than it should be? Now I'm sure AM is going to be unlistenable because I happen to be using an LED light bulb over this workbench so it's throwing out a bunch of RF interference and nasty noise and hum on AM but we'll give it a shot anyway. No, not as bad as I thought. Hello, a fastball. Got a cool off the line to a little 43 in the city and about 38 in the suburbs. Tomorrow and Friday, we got breezy to windy weather, much cooler highs in the mid-50s, lows at night in the low 40s. We'll warm back up into the upper 50s to around 60. Right. Let restrooms a fat play. Let any car serve it. Showing since 20. <laughs> Now with the help of just this regular Phillips screwdriver and removing this uh, clock set thumb screw and total of four screws, five of that one weren't missing, you gain access to the inside of this thing and you can take a look at how exactly this entire mechanism works. Very simple, all mechanical of course. There's your very sensitive ferrite rod AM loop stick antenna. There's your mono microphone jack, which I'm sure if you really wanted to, you can adapt into a stereo jack so you didn't have to use an adapter. I have really no clue when this thing was manufactured. I'm looking at something that looks very close to be a date code, but I really have not a clue how to decipher it. And the only problem with this thing when I first got it was somebody had been in here previously monkeying around with the dial assembly, the dial cards, and had put a bunch of them inside the same little hole for each one because you see each one of these little number cards there's uh, well 60 in total snap into their own respective little holes on the mechanism so when it's their turn the mechanism flips it they come down and they show what the proper time is on the actual dial however somebody decided to take a bunch of these stick them and jam them all into the same little hole so that when this would get to right around the 40 minute mark, they'd all jam up at once and it wouldn't keep time. It would just stay stuck on 40 for about 10 minutes. And then after it got to around 10 minutes, they'd all come falling down at once and skip all the way to right around 55. They were all being jammed up, which was not how they were intended to work and function. And don't you wish most other radios that use an actual dial cord have a little illustration inside telling you how you're supposed to <laughs> rewire it if you have to take it apart. Yeah, I sure do. Now if you look here, here's that washer the screw is supposed to fasten to. Here are the plastic pieces. Take note of what they look like because when we spin this unit around, you can see that over here they are most clearly cracked off and missing, as is that washer. And the only thing that's still preserved from that original, uh, original piece is the screw which is hidden underneath that masking tape which probably isn't a good idea judging as how masking tape decides to deteriorate and completely bake itself onto the material it's affixed to after a certain amount of years 
but it's not for me to worry about and at least it's safe and sound there until I ever get around to fixing that and the phone has got to be ringing the minute I pick up the camcorder I don't see any bloated capacitors that's a good sign and the mechanism has been recently lubricated I thought lubricating it would quiet down the noise it's making but apparently it hasn't it's still just as loud as it was but I really have no comparison to base that on because I never heard one of these things when they were brand new and purchased right off of the uh, right from the store so I don't know it could be that that could be the way it was it sounded when it was brand new maybe after all these years the the, the motor has gotten a bit noisier but hey it still works I'm not complaining <laughs> Of course it's nighttime out, or at least very close to being nighttime. So the skyway signals are beginning to pollute the AM airwaves, and so you're beginning to lose far and distant stations you would otherwise be able to listen to during the day. But still pretty amazing that this thing can pull in this station. Wow, I guess all the radio stations decided to go to commercials at once. Well, then again, yeah, it's the top of the hour, so why not? At 10 miles an hour. Apparently, this can tune in all the way up to the AM band that NOAA Weather Radio happens to reside on.